everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Fat Tuesday. It is Mardi Gras. So it is, you know, a day of indulgent behavior, I would say. Um, it got me kind of thinking about jewelry and making our own jewelry using thread. So we're going to talk about freestanding lace today. I'm going to go over the techniques and tips. And if you have any questions about freestanding lace, be sure to put them in the comments or in the live chat, because as long as you're engaging with me during the live stream here today, whether it's posting a comment or question, giving me those great emojis, liking and sharing out the stream, you will be automatically eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is a pack of three of our water soluble stabilizers, Sulky Solvi, Sulky Super Solvi, and Sulky Ultra Solvi. And we're gonna be talking about the differences between those and which one is best for freestanding lace. So hello, I see a lot of you coming into the comments in the chat. Welcome everybody. Before we get started, I wanna let you know, of course we are still in the throes of National Embroidery Month. Yay, I'm gonna give that a round of applause. Yay! We love National Embroidery Month here at Sulky, and today, this fantastic sale is happening at sulky.com. We have up to 35% off Sulky rayon thread, single spools, assortments, and slim lines. Also 35% off of wash away and tear away stabilizers. And today's uh, So What episode is all about wash away stabilizers. So you can get that at a really great deal today. Also, we've got 50% off select machine embroidery designs. So it is really a great time to stock up your sewing room for some great projects. And uh, some of those we're gonna be talking about today. So this is an image of um, some various bracelets that I made recently using freestanding lace techniques. And uh, they're much easier than you might think. Now, they are all made of thread. There is no fabric involved here. So you do need to stock up on those larger spools of thread if you're going to make a few bracelets. And especially if you want them in different colors, because of course, why not? I tried to do a little kind of Mardi Gras color combo here on this large uh, cuff bracelet. And uh, I actually used some sulky variegated rayon. We have uh, some variegated colors. So you can see lots of different colors running through and I only used one spool of thread. Now the rayon is a 40 weight thread and I find that a lot of these freestanding lace designs, if not all of the ones I have come into contact with, um, are digitized for 40 weight thread. Um, sometimes you can go up to a 30 weight cotton thread, um, but I would stick with 40 weight rayon. And if you do want that look of a lot of colors, throughout the design, maybe the design is only digitized in one color of thread, you can grab up one of those variegated spools and stitch something really unique. Um, some of these other bracelet samples that I have have a few color changes within them. So you can see this kind of peachy um, brownish uh, tan bracelet that I made with the gold chain. It has, I think, two or three color changes to it. So you can coordinate your threads as well. I didn't follow the color chart for any of these. I will tell you that right now. And you do want to use the same thread in the bobbin because you're gonna see all sides of your finished creation and you want the right side looking just as good as the wrong side. So you can see with this variegated one, looks just as pretty on the inside as it does on the out. It's almost difficult to decipher what is the right side um, of your finished project. So at any rate, we're gonna talk about bracelets, jewelry specifically, but a lot of these techniques or tips or hooping, thread recommendations, etc., 
apply to pretty much all freestanding lace uh, projects or freestanding lace designs. There are so many different kinds of freestanding lace. You can create bookmarks, you can create um, ornaments, you can create freestanding three-dimensional projects like Christmas villages, um, or we actually have a freestanding lace uh, webcast coming up on March 14th. I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit here with Sheila Ryan of Designs by Baby Moon. And the project itself is not technically freestanding lace because we are going to be stitching our 3D project onto Sulky Felty. However, the technique for creating this 3D um, project is freestanding lace techniques mixed with applique in the hoop techniques. So that's why the webcast is called Freestanding Lace Tea Lights, and I'll get to that momentarily. Let me know if you've already signed up for that one. It's happening March 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so I did mention like little bookmarks and freestanding items like this. Like here is a little um, angel that uh, Patty Lee gifted to me uh, for Christmas. And this could work as a bookmark or charm, or you could even put it on a pin back and wear it as a little pin, things of that nature. So here's the thing. Like I mentioned, freestanding lace is made up entirely of thread. So it needs a really good support during the stitch out, but we also want that support to just go away entirely once our creation is complete. So we want to use a wash away stabilizer. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, are familiar with Sulky Salvi. Salvi, the original Salvi, is a lightweight water-soluble film-like stabilizer. And this is what we use as a topper. Over the top of nappy, plush, heavyweight, um, high pile fabrics that we want to embroider so that the thread work uh, raises up on top of the fabric surface and doesn't sink into that fabric nap. So that topper helps tame the fabric, especially if it's a really nappy fabric, like a terry cloth towel that might, the, the loops might go in different directions. You want to brush all of those uh, loops in one direction, apply your solvi, and then embroider your design. That way, when your design is completed, you don't have these little tufts of terry cloth loops skewing the edges of the design or maybe going in different directions. So that really gives you a nice professional looking result. For things like freestanding lace, freestanding uh, patches, charms, things like that, we need more stability than original Solvi can give us. Now, Sulky Super Solvi is twice as thick as Sulky Solvi. So if you find, even when using a topper, that maybe it is too um, thin for you to use a Sulky Solvi, like Solvi would be too thin, you can go up to a Super Solvi. Now for freestanding lace items like this, or like an angel tree topper, or something like this, where we need that stiffness to remain so that, you know, our jewelry has a shape to it, right? I like to use Ultra Solvi. Ultra Solvi is four times as thick as the original Solvi. So it's very thick, has a an exceptional support to it so that it all of those heavy stitches and dense areas have something to hold on to during the stitch out. And the great thing about it is when you go to wash it away, you can wash it out completely if you want, if you want a little bit softer, you know, bracelet or uh, bookmark, let's say, or you can leave some of the solvi behind, the ultra solvi, within the threads and the thread loops, and then you can shape your item as it dries and it will retain its nice bracelet shape. 
throughout its life. So really great for a tree top or something you need to stand up on its own. You can leave some of that salvie behind. Now, if you accidentally wash all of it away and you're trying to shape it and it's flopping around on you, you can take your excess ultra salvie or even salvie that you've torn away or you know that you've removed your piece of freestanding lace from and you can dissolve it in some water in a spray bottle that you dedicate to liquid stabilizer and you can spray your finished item once you have shaped it, let it dry, and then you will get the same effect um, of having it stand up on its own. So you can really use a lot, all of those leftover salvi bits and pieces, collect them all in a spray bottle, and then dissolve it in some water and experiment with using that as a liquid stabilizer. It's useful for a number of other things as well, but particularly shaping freestanding lace. All right, so let's get started with our bracelets specifically. And if you are interested, I just noticed my phone is behind me, let me move up. If you are interested in the design collection for these bracelets and cuffs, um, it is an OESD design collection, and I linked directly to it in the description of the post today. So you'll be able to navigate right over to OESD and grab up the whole design collection. I believe it's about $19.99 and you get all these great different um, bracelets and cuff designs that are really pretty. These make great gifts any time of year. And you know, as long as you have a really big thread stash or a large king spool of sulky rayon, variegated rayon, that type of thing, thread, then you're good to go and you can make lots of these great gifts. Um, I also want to mention too that, well, we'll get to this, but um, usually when you're creating things like bracelets and cuffs and necklaces and earrings and charms, you need some kind of hardware, right? So you'll notice on my bracelets, I have some different types of hardware and some hardware that I've kind of uh, finagled together uh, based on the size that I needed to go around my own wrist or my arm or wherever you want to wear your cuff. And I found it super handy to grab up just a jewelry kit. Um, I put an Amazon link in the description of today's post if you're interested in checking that out. But it comes with a lot of... Uh, um, lobster claws, hooks, um, jump rings, all kinds of things that you can mix and match to uh, secure your finished jewelry. And I should mention that these cuff designs that I used, if you dry these flat, they would make beautiful gift, uh, they would make beautiful bookmarks. You can even on the little, um, on the little, uh, what would this be called? The little holes that you use to attach, you know, your jump rings and lobster claws, you could add some thread tassels and things like that to make some really cool bookmarks. All right, so we'll get to that as well. Uh, let's see here. So first off, we're going to import the design of our choice into our embroidery machine. And you can see that I wasn't about to just stitch one of these at a time. So I went ahead and imported this and then I rotated my design and I moved it to the top of my hoop and I just started adding all the bracelet designs I could from that collection. So now I can stitch all of these in one hooping and I can go from one to the next to the next. And at this point, you can decide if you're going to swap out your thread colors, um, or if you want to uh, stitch one all in monochrome, you can select it and then select your monochrome option if you have that on your machine screen. It's a really great time saver so you don't have to advance through different thread changes. You can just click on that monochrome option um, if you have that for your machine. So once I have them all in my large hoop, Oh, here's that variegated rayon that I used for my Mardi Gras colors. Um, and I see somebody just asked what color it was that I chose. And I wish I had it right next to me, um, which <laughs> normally I do because um, I 
I'm not very good at cleaning up after every project. I just kind of move stuff to the side and start on the next. Um, I believe it is in the blog post at blog.sulky.com. I wish that this photo showed the number of spool on there, um, but perhaps we can locate it and put it in the chat here. But this is what I used for the, um, the monochrome design that I used. And then all three others have some thread changes to them. Three or four thread colors. I think this one has only two. Um, so, you know, you can play around with your thread color combos that you like. So now we need to uh, hoop our Ultra Solvy stabilizer. And again, this stabilizer is four times as thick as the original Solvy. And I'm using a magnetic hoop here. You can use your standard hoop, no problem at all. Um, but we are only uh, hooping our stabilizer. And if you are interested in these magnetic hoops, you can find them now at sulky.com. Um, you'll need to put in your brand, make, and model of machine, and then it will tell you the hoop sizes that are available to you for purchase. And these are absolutely amazing. I know that I talk about them a lot, but they really have like changed my life in regards to machine embroidery. They just make everything so, so easy and so simple. Um, there's a question, have you ever used metallic thread? And yes, I have actually. I have used Sulky Poly Sparkle to create a really beautiful bracelet. Um, it is a 30 weight thread, so you need to do a test stitch out and make sure that your freestanding lace isn't too, too dense to accommodate the thread weight. Um, but the Poly Sparkle looks really cool because it has those flecks of metallic running through it. And you can get the look of, you know, a really pretty shiny shimmery piece of jewelry that's made out of thread. So I suggest you give that a try too. You can also, if you're making like um, an earring charm, you can use Poly Sparkle just for the satin stitch edging around the earring. And then maybe the inside part of the earring charm is out of rayon or poly deco thread. So lots of choices there. I also wanted to mention too, I thought these would be really cute to add on to a freestanding lace bookmark, little gifty. Um, and they already have a little lobster claw and jump ring attached to them. Aren't these adorable? Here's some too. We have these now at sulky.com and you can clip them onto your little freestanding lace charms and make a really great sewing themed gift out of it. This one says so cute. And then there's like a pattern envelope on the other one. These make great bag charms and key rings and things like that too. I think this might be my favorite with the bobbin on top of the little uh, thread spools, the little bobbin spools. So cute. Anyway, um, those just caught my eye and I had to remember to tell you all about them. All right. <laughs> So somebody asked, what size of magnetic hoop is most used? Um, that is such a subjective kind of answer, I guess, um, because it really depends on the type of embroidery that you do most often. You know, if you're doing a lot of end-to-end -end quilting or quilting in the hoop or edge-to-edge -edge designs, sometimes they're called, where you're basically creating your own fabric or quilting in the hoop of your embroidery machine, I would get the biggest magnetic hoop possible and add that on, you know, into your sewing room as an, an additional uh, hoop that you have on hand. Um, because you can always go down on your designs in a bigger hoop, even though it's not technically recommended. But if you get a small hoop, you can't go up, right? You can't go beyond that design size. So I would go with the largest size that you can afford and, you know, put it on your gift list for things like Mother's Day, things like your birthday, <laughs> things like, you know, even even next Christmas's Christmas list, uh, you know, add that to the list of things when your friends and family say, hey, what do you want for Christmas? You know, you always have everything you want. So what can I get for you? Magnetic hoops and all of them because you will absolutely love it. 
you know, I have such a problem. I have arthritis in my thumbs and I have such a problem sometimes tightening those hoop screws. Magnetic hoops allow you to just slap them together. No tightening or anything of the hoop is needed. You can hoop things like denim. You can hoop things like entire quilt sandwiches. They are absolutely phenomenal. And you can see I'm even using them to create freestanding lace because I basically like never use my standard hoops anymore. <laughs> I'm so in love with the magnetic hoops. I'll hoop even just ultra solvy in them. No problem. All right. And Sharon has a great suggestion. She says, for your first magnetic hoop, I suggest buying the size you most often use. Absolutely. That's a great, great answer. Thank you. All right. So after we've hooped our ultra solvy, we are simply going to start stitching out the design. I love watching embroidery designs come together right in front of my eyes. It's absolutely amazing. I do want to mention if you have any jump threads in your design um, or any tie off stitches at the beginning of your design, I suggest stopping midway or at your jump thread uh, moments and removing your hoop from the machine, turning it over and trimming up any stray threads that you might have thus far in the stitch out. Because if there's anything tangly or a little knot or a little stray thread on the wrong side, it's going to be really hard to trim that away effectively um, once your design is complete because those little bits can get caught in other areas of the stitching. And you might have a little bump or a little unsightly, you know, bit of thread or thread loop on the wrong side when your beautiful jewelry or bookmark or, you know, a tree topper is complete. And like I said, you're going to see the wrong side of this. Every part of this is usually visible. So you want to take care of those things before they kind of affect the rest of the project. So just kind of be aware of that. You'll remove the hoop from the machine, but keep everything intact. Don't move your stabilizer, nothing. Just move your or turn your uh, hoop over, trim up anything that, you know, you might be noticing uh, throughout the stitch out. If there's a little thread loop, something like that, and quickly take care of that. So now you can see I've gotten three done according to this image, and I'm starting the fourth bracelet. And they're really coming together in the hoop. And that ultra solvy is so strong that it doesn't perforate along the edges, those really dense satin outline edges of these lace designs. It doesn't perforate. Everything is still nice and on that, that ultra solvy. However, you will still be able to kind of almost tear it away once your embroidery is complete. So that strong ultra solvy is really, really what we're going for here. Um, and again, it's on sale right now at sulky.com. So I mentioned jump threads. And in my experience, these freestanding lace designs generally don't have a whole lot of jump threads um, to deal with. And if there are any, you want to make sure, again, to be trimming those up with your curved tip squeezers and make sure that you take care of those with each color change. Um, because as you can see, there's lots of open areas with, uh, with uh, lace work and, you know, a lot of these areas that are just thread chains. And you want to make sure that there are no little stray bits in between any of those open areas or you know, that it's not interfering with the rest of the stitch out or the movement of your embroidery foot and the embroidery needle. So when your embroidery is complete, you will simply remove your hoop from the machine, tear away um, any stabilizer that you can. I will say, you know, ultra solvy is very thick. So um, you'll probably have to go in and just trim um, you know, close to the edge of your bracelets, cuffs, bookmarks, pieces, etc. Some freestanding lace designs, like for example, a Christmas village, let's say, will stitch out multiple pieces in one design. So you'll have like the front of the house, the back of the house, the sides, the roof. Those will all be different pieces. 
You want to be really careful to not nick any of your stitches when you're trimming them from the stabilizer as well. And I always start kind of with the edges when I'm rinsing away the ultra salvi, and you want to rinse away under running water. Um, if you want a lot of the salvi to remain so that your pieces are very stiff, um, you can get away with soaking it in a pool of water. Um, but I always, as a general rule, when I'm re removing water soluble stabilizer, I like to do it under running water. If there's any um, oversaturation of thread dye or anything, I don't want that pooling around on other parts of that same piece of freestanding lace. So I'm always rinsing it away into the sink, down the drain, and that way I'm doing it rather quickly as well. And you can start shaping your pieces under the water even, so you can kind of get a feel for how much salvia is kind of left in between uh, the thread fibers or the thread, the stitches rather. So I kind of like to work around the satin stitch edging and I'll even kind of um, brush almost uh, the satin stitches toward the back side of the work so that that edge of salvi is kind of helping shape that outer edge of each piece of lace. All right. And then, like I mentioned before, you can either let them all dry flat on a towel or you can let them dry partially on a towel and then lift them up and kind of curve them around like a bracelet. I like to try it on. And then I'm like, okay, that's the shape of my wrist. And then I'll slip it off and then put it upright about halfway through the drying process. And that way it's shaped a little bit more like that bracelet is ultimately going to be shaped. If you're making a bookmark or something, you can actually sandwich it in between your toweling and then put a book on top or some heavy object. And that'll actually ensure that it's going to be nice and flat when your item is fully dried. And then when it is dry, you can check it. Make sure all the salvi is removed, or if you wanna add some more salvi, spray it with that liquid stabilizer that we talked about, give it a little shaping, and then let it dry again. Sandra is asking, how many layers of salvi do you use? I used one layer of Sulky Ultra Salvi. Ultra Salvi is four times as thick as original Salvi. And I don't want to use four layers of Salvi. Um, it's just really not going to be conducive to all of those needle penetrations. You know, the original Salvi is very film-like, and we want something that's more substantial that all of those threads and needle penetrations can withstand. So Ultra Salvi is really the ticket. Let's see, this is a really great tip. I like to put a drop or two of fabric softener in my rinse bowl. Um, we have hard water and it helps to remove the water soluble stabilizer. Brilliant, I have never done that before. So thank you so much for um, giving us that tip. Perfect. Um, okay, Jennifer, I don't understand what you're saying, but maybe someone else does. You can let brackets dry on the side of a jar of peanut butter. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means, but thank you for the tip. <laughs> Is there a size of needle you use when stitching? Great question, Lisa. So for the 48 rayon, we are going to use a size 8012 needle is really the ticket. But for these freestanding lace designs, I believe I used a 7511. And some people might say that's too small for machine embroidery. Um, but when I'm just stitching through Solvi, um, I think there is, I don't know, less friction or something that goes on because your needle doesn't have to penetrate that many layers of thicker fabric. And so uh, there's enough room in that 7511 needle eye to accommodate the 40 weight thread. Um, but an 8012 is great if you're using poly sparkle thread or if you're going to go up to a 30 weight cotton thread, you'll need a 9014 needle and perhaps a 9014, I was going to say top stitch, but that might be a little too pointy. We don't want to perforate our solvi. 
Um, and an embroidery needle has a little bit of a ballpoint tip. So that's why it's really great for stitching only on that ultra solvy uh, stabilizer. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. She's saying to dry your bracelet around a round can or jar. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I don't get it, but I thank you all for letting me know. <laughs> Great tip. All right. So here's that finished cuff and it's about halfway through the drying process. So again, I just put it around my arm where I wanted to wear it. And then I kind of removed it gently and shaped it on that towel for the rest of the drying process stood up nice on its own and was great. So now we've got to consider how are we going to close these bracelets and jewelry and all this kind of stuff around our wrist. Um, we simply cannot tie it together with thread because then we would have to snip it off when we're done wearing it. So as I mentioned, a jewelry kit is a really great thing to purchase because you can create um, different lengths of these sort of jewelry extenders that you can put on either side of your bracelet or cuff designs. You can see all of these have little loops on the end so you can attach your little jewelry connectors. This one has a hole here and a hole here. And again, these would make great uh, bookmark designs where you can create some uh, some thread fringe using some 12 weight cotton, different colors, 12 weight blendables would give you lots of different colors. Um, but anyways, you can see all of these cuffs and bracelets have these little loops. And then you can create a chain using these lobster clips and a series of jump rings or a series of chain and make them as small or as large as you need to fit around your wrist. If you're making little freestanding lace earrings, You'll want to get a jewelry kit that has earring backs or uh, hoops or, um, you know, different ways of wearing your earrings, things like that. You can also grab some pin backs. Some of the jewelry kits have all of these things in them, and they also come with a little pair of pliers that you can always keep with the kit. So I link to the one that I use. Um, it's an Amazon link in the description of today's post but you can find a number of jewelry kit, jewelry making supplies, little bags of jump rings, things like that, probably at your fabric store um, uh, or local craft store as well. And they're relatively inexpensive. So uh, this one came with some gold pieces and some silver pieces. If you like all gold, you can find that too. They're just really readily available. So here is my gray and black and silver uh, bracelet. So I put a silver charm on that one. And then I also wanted to show you, oh, here's the back. So you can see the lobster claws go around the little loops and then you can adjust the length of your chain depending on you know the size of your wrist or where you're going to wear it. So there I have that one. There is the pretty red one. And then there's also the option in a lot of jewelry kits where one side will be a lobster claw and the other side is a loop or a chain or a jump ring. And in that case, you can hand sew the loop side to your little um, thread loop and then it will always be attached on that side and then you can use your lobster claw on the other. So that's just another option but I found it was, you know, I, I just didn't have the greatest confidence that that was going to last very long. Even though I used very strong thread, I made a number of knots when I was sewing this around uh, the chain loop. Um, I just didn't think that that was probably going to be the strongest option, but you definitely uh, can, can go this route as well. And there is that large scale, my Mardi Gras cuff, I'm going to call it. And for that one, I found this magnetic jewelry clasp. And I will say this did not come in my jewelry kit. I made a separate purchase for it, but I think I got three or four of them for like six bucks, something like that. But this is really cool because you know how hard it is to put your own bracelet on your own wrist. Am I right? It's kind of hard 
to do those little clasps by yourself. So these magnetic ones simply are magnetized. I'm like super into the magnets today. We got magnetic hoops. We got magnetic bracelet clasps. These are super cool. So what I did was I took the little magnet clasp and it's very strong. <laughs> took the little magnet clasp and then I attached a jump ring to either side of it and that was the perfect size for my wrist. So you might need one or two jump rings to make that extension or you might need no jump rings and then you can leave the jump ring off and use that little hook or the jump ring that comes with the magnetic clasp to put that around your little thread loop. So lots of options for how to wear these and the accoutrements that you need um, in order to make them work and to wear them as jewelry. All right, I'm going to go ahead and address any questions. I mean, freestanding lace is really so, so easy. And I hear a lot from people that they're so intimidated. They're so scared to try it. They think they're going to mess something up and it uses all this thread. But here's the thing, you know, we're embroidering on fabric all the time, making mistakes and, you know, our test stitch out didn't go as planned and we've got to start over. And not only are we, are we, you know, sad about losing all that thread, but we are also losing all that fabric. But freestanding lace is only thread. So, you know, in my opinion, why not give it a go? It really couldn't be easier because the machine is doing most of that work for you you are pressing start and swapping out colors. That's why I love machine embroidery as a whole. Um, but at any rate, <laughs> lots of people loving the uh, magnetic, magnetic clasps. And, oh, Esther says tie a surgeon's knot if you wanna tie a thread knot to attach your lobster claws and jump rings. So that's a good idea. And Esther says, if you have a really small wrist, you can use a decorative button and attach a loop to one of the holes. Great idea. Thank you. And Susan says, little girls would feel so dressed up to have some of these bracelets. I know I've been hiding mine from my girls because I know as soon as they see them, I will never see them again. <laughs> All right. Fun to add crystals to them too. Great idea. Love it. And could make a beautiful headpiece for a bridal veil. So smart. I love that we can come together and share all these ideas and it just, you know, gets my creative juices flowing. And now I know what to try next um, and what to bring to you all. Love that. All right. And Marcia says you need to jump in with both feet. So if you're nervous about freestanding lace, you just give it a go and you see just how easy it is. And making your own freestanding lace jewelry will be different from anyone else's depending on the color of thread. Exactly. So you can see this one that I made with the variegated, you know, Mardi Gras colors. If you look at when I imported it on screen, it's made of like these teal, light blue colors, and I just totally swapped it out. I selected monochrome so it would stitch out all in one color, and I cho chose that 40 weight variegated rayon, and really cool, totally different. Um, and whatever you decide to stitch yours out of will look totally different. Perfect. Suzanne says, use a piece of elastic string for a child's bracelet. Perfect. Or add it on top of a wide leather band for an embroidered bracelet. Exactly. You know what else would be cool? And I think I saw this the other day. So you take, let's say this cuff design, right? And you actually embroider just half of it onto a piece of fabric, like a piece of cork fabric or faux leather fabric, and you cut away the fabric in the open areas, and then the other half of your freestanding lace design extends beyond the edge of your cork fabric, 
and it's like a flap for a purse or a flap for a wallet or something like that. Really cool things you can do merging these kind of freestanding designs with designs that you stitch actually onto the fabric as well. So, so many different cool things you can do. All right, Donna says, I did a beautiful lace collar. The kids took it right after it was done. Yep, pretty much. You'll have to do another one. <laughs> uh, perfect. All right, so people are asking about other designs and things like this that you can find. You know, use that link and head on over to OESD and check out these freestanding lace bracelets and cuffs if you're interested in those. You definitely could stitch this out, add some elastic along the bottom, and it's a cute little headband or headpiece like many of you are saying. These could be dried flat, add some thread tassels to them, and you've got yourself some bookmarks. You can make them into key rings all kinds of things. Even though it's labeled as a bracelet or cuff design, you can take that and do with it what you will. Wendy is saying chokers would be beautiful. Yes, all those are coming back too. All right, so on to our webcast, which is happening March 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Like I mentioned, this webcast is going to be about creating these beautiful freestanding tea light covers. And they're not necessarily freestanding lace because as you can see, they have sulky felty as the base of the project. And you stitch all these out in different, uh, or they're all in different pieces. And then you will assemble them together and insert a battery operated tea light. So it's like a hanging lantern. And they can look like little eggs for Easter and you can hang them up or you can simply make one, put it in your bathroom as a decorative accent with little, you know, battery operated tea light. You can make a centerpiece out of them. And then as part of the tutorial, you will also learn how to make some freestanding earrings and bonus charms. So the bonus charm designs can easily be made into earrings with a little bit of jewelry hardware or you can tie them to strings or ribbons and put them on an adorable little Easter tree. So we're going to be joined by Sheila Ryan of Baby Moon or Designs by Baby Moon. And she's going to walk us through this entire project with freestanding lace stitch out tips, as well as freestanding applique or freestanding project uh, tutorials, tips, and tricks. So I hope you will join for this free webcast happening March 14th, 2 p.m. Eastern time over at sewingonline.sulky.com. We have kits for these projects with the felty, with the thread, with the ultra salty stabilizer, and with the organ needles that you need to create tons of little freestanding lanterns as well as the bonus charms. So these would be great for Easter, but also just springtime decorating, decor, and wearables. Um, so the kit is already on sale. It is at a screaming deal at sulky.com. And you'll want to grab a kit for this because if you buy everything individually, I mean, the design collection alone is valued at $19.99 and the bonus charms are valued at $14.99. So for, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks more, you get all the thread, the stabilizer, the needles, the felty, everything delivered to your front door. So grab a kit, join us on March 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, where you will be expanding your freestanding lace knowledge even more, creating some freestanding, uh, fun little springy decor projects. All right, Sue's going to join the webcast. Jennifer's already registered. All right. And then Sheila says, make different colors for different holidays. Why not? It's perfect. Um, Esther says, I wish the design had two sides that were simply lace, so the tea light would show through better. So it's really hard to show you all what it looks like in the felty, but it actually really glows very nicely. Um, I have a video of it, but I don't have it queued up for you today. 
but I will be sure to post that video on our YouTube page so you can see the little flickering uh, battery operated light inside of the Felty, but it, it, it's pretty striking. It's pretty cute. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, looking forward to this webcast. Me too. Love the look of these. Perfect. And if you are looking for more jewelry designs, um, specifically earrings, uh, Sheila from Designs by Baby Moon, she really has a ton of different freestanding lace earring designs, and she's releasing them all the time. Uh, she says they're her best sellers, and she just has such a cute design aesthetic, so you can find a lot of different jewelry styles, um, specifically for the dangly earring charms. Um, she also does some where she adds some thread tassels to them. So uh, you can try your hand at making a bunch of those too. And the great thing about those is they're so small, you can do a ton of those in one hooping. You know, if you have a group of friends and you want to make the same earrings for everybody, maybe you're going on a trip together or you want to commemorate a specific holiday or pay tribute to somebody, you can create a bunch of sets of earrings and gift them to all of your friends. And then you could be all matchy matchy, really cute, great gift idea. All right, tea lights are so fun. All right, Michelle is registered. So we are good to go. All right, well, I wanna let you all know I am off to QuiltCon. QuiltCon is happening in Atlanta this year and I will be at the Sulky booth and talking to all the passersby and manning the booth and just taking it all in. So I'm hoping to do some live streaming so you all can see what we're up to out there at QuiltCon in Atlanta. I'm sure you want to take a look at the booths and the classes and the quilt show. Um, so I'll be bringing you all of that um, this weekend and into next week. Um, but don't worry, I will be back next Tuesday for another So What? So be sure to join me and set your notifications, uh, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, so you get a little notification when we're going live. And then you will be able to uh, watch all of our shenanigans at the QuiltCon. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, and um, I hope you are all as well. So I'll see you next Tuesday for another So What? And I'll see you this weekend out there on the road at QuiltCon Atlanta. All right, have a great rest of your day, everyone, and I hope you sew something fantastic.